हरे राम हरे राम 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्णा हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्रहलाद नरसिंह जय सुदर्शन जय जय प्रभु जय विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिवराज कचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद हिज डिवाइन ग्रेसा भय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद की जय विष्णुपाद परम हंस नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर महाराज की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नामचार्य शील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि 
गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण चंद्र की जय श्री श्री कृष्ण बलराम की जय श्री श्री निताय गौरांग की जय श्री श्री प्रहलाद नरसिंह देव की जय श्री श्री सुदर्शन भगवान की जय हरि नाम संकीर्तन यज्ञ की जय समवेत गौर भक्त वृंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द सिंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द सिंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द सिंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू गुरु एंड गौरंग ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री लभु ग्रंथवा श्रीमद भागवतम की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्राएद्रेशो नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तमा श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम सेवेंथ कैंटो नाइन चैप्टर टेक्स्ट नंबर फोर्टी फाइव यन मैथुनादि ग्रह मेधि सुखम हि तुच्छम यन मैथुनादि ग्रह मेधि सुखम हि तुच्छम कंडूय ने न करयोर एवा दुख दुखम कंडूय ने न करयोर एव दुख दुखम तृप्यृपण बहु दुख भाज तृप्य नेह कृपण बहु दुख भाज कंडूतिव मनसी जम विषेता धीर कंडूतिव मनसी जम विषेत धीर यन मैथुनादि ग्रह मेधि सुखम हि तुच्छम कंडूय ने न करोरव दुख दुखम तृप्य नेह कृपण बहु दुख भाज कंडूतिव मनसी जम विषेत धीर यन मैथुनादि ग्रह मेधि सुखम हि तुच्छम कंडूय ने न करोरव दुख दुखम तृप्य नेह कृपण बहु दुख भाज कंडूतिव मनसी जम विषेत धीर यन मैथुनादि ग्रह मेधि सुखम हि तुच्छम कंडूय ने न करोरव दुख दुखम तृप्य ने कृपण बहु दुख भाज 
कंडु तिवन मनसि जम विषहेत धीर यन मैथुनादिग्रह में दि सुखम हित उच्चम कंडु यने न करयोरिव दुख दुखम कृपयंति ने अकृपणा बहु दुख भाज कंडु तिवन मनसि जम विषहेत धीर Yeah, that which is meant for material sense gratification. Mathuna Adi, represented by talking of sex, reading sexual literature, or enjoying sex life, at home or outside, as in a club. Grahamedi Sukham All types of material happiness based on attachment to family, society, friendship, etc. He indeed Tucham insignificant Kanduyanena with the itching Karayo of the two hands to relieve the itching. Eva like Dukha Dukham different types of unhappiness into which one is put after such itching sense gratification. Tripyanti become satisfied. Na never Iha in material sense gratification. Kripana the foolish persons. Bahu Dukkha Bhajaha subjected to various types of material unhappiness. Kandu Tivat if one can learn from such itching Manasijam which is simply a mental concoction actually there is no happiness Vishaheta and tolerates such itching Dheeraha he can become a most perfect sober person Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Prabhupad. Translation. Sex life is compared to the rubbing of two hands to relieve an itch. Grahamedhis, so-called grihasthas, who have no spiritual knowledge, think that this itching is the greatest platform of happiness, although actually it is a source of distress. The kribanas, the fools, who are just the opposite of brahmanas are not satisfied by repeated sensuous enjoyment. Those who are dhira, however, who are sober and who tolerate this itching are not subjected to the sufferings of fools and rascals. Please repeat. Sex life is compared to the rubbing of two hands to relieve an itch. Grihamedhis, so-called grihasthas, who have no spiritual knowledge, think that this itching is the greatest platform of happiness. Although actually it is a source of distress, the kripanas, the fools, who are just the opposite of brahmanas, are not satisfied by repeated sensuous enjoyment. Those who are dhira, however, who are sober and who tolerate this itching are not subjected to the sufferings of fools and rascals. Purport Materialists think that sexual indulgence is the greatest happiness in this material world and therefore they make elaborate plans to satisfy their senses, especially the genitals. This is generally found everywhere and especially found in the western world 
where there are regular arrangements to satisfy sex life in different ways. Actually, however, this has not made anyone happy. Even the hippies who have given up all the materialistic comforts of their fathers and grandfathers cannot give up the sensational happiness of sex life. Such persons are described here as Kripanas, misers. The human form of life is a great asset, for in this life one can fulfill the goal of existence. Unfortunately, however, because of a lack of education and culture, people are victimized by the false happiness of sex life. Prahlad Maharaj therefore advises one not to be misled by the civilization of sense gratification, and especially not by sex life. Rather, one should be sober, avoid sense gratification, and be Krishna conscious. The lusty person who is compared to a foolish miser never gets happiness by sense gratification. The influence of material nature is very difficult to surpass, but as stated by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Mam evye prapadyante maya metam tarantite, if one voluntarily submits to the lotus feet of Krishna, he can be saved very easily. In reference to the low grade happiness of sex life, Yamunacharya says in this connection. Yadavadhi mamacheta krishna padaravinde navanavarasa dham nyudyatam rantumasit tadavadhi batanari sangame smarnyamane bhavati mukh vikara sushtu nishthi vanamcha. Since I have been engaged in the transcendental loving service of Krishna, realizing ever new pleasure in Him, whenever I think of sex pleasure, I spit at the thought and my lips curl with distaste. Yamunachare had formerly been a great king who enjoyed sexual happiness in various ways, but since he later engaged himself in the service of the Lord, he enjoyed spiritual bliss and hated to think of sex life. If sexual thoughts came to him, he would spit with disgust. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. O Magyana Timirandhas Gyana Anjana Shalaka. Chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha Namam Vishnu padaya Krishna preshthaya bhutale Shri mate bhakti vedanta smaminiti namine Namaste sarasvate deve gauravani pracharini Nirvishesha shunyavadi pashati deshatarini Jai shri Krishna chaitanya prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare In the previous verse we discussed, Prabhupada stated therein the purpose of the Hare Krishna movement. So we could not go live on YouTube because of some fault in the camera. So those who missed can please read that verse and the purport. So it is very important. Prahlad Maharaj is stating, Prayena Deva Munaya Svavyamukti Kama Prayena means almost. Deva Munaya, the Munis, sages, they are interested in Svavyamukti, their own liberation. Prayana means almost all, generally almost all the sages, they are interested in Swavimukti. Swavimukti means my Vimukti, my liberation. Kama, this is their desire. And they don't show compassion to general living entities, they don't preach. But Prahlad Maharaj tells, I don't desire like this. I wish to be here, I wish to take everyone back to Godhead, those people who are suffering here. So then Prabhupada states in the purport that this is the purpose of the Hare Krishna movement. What is the purpose? Every member of the Krishna consciousness movement must go door to door and try to convince people of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is and of Lord Chaitanya. So very simple Prabhupada stated, this is the purpose, what all activities we are doing. The purpose of all activities of the movement is <clears throat> that every member, yes initially we may not be expected, we might be very new, we are just getting introduced to it, but when we actually feel a part of the Krishna consciousness movement, we consider ourselves member of the movement, 
then what we are supposed to do, Prabhupada tells, when is one qualified to call himself a member? Every member of the Krishna consciousness movement goes door to door to convince people about the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is and Lord Chaitanya. Because he understands people cannot be happy unless they surrender completely to Krishna. Now the question can be, what can we preach? So many instructions are there. Sometimes we doubt other person will be able to understand or not. People ask various questions. Have you seen God? If you have not seen, why you are believing? Where is God? Where does God live? What is the authenticity of these instructions? So what we can preach when we approach such people? Preaching the spiritual world does not elicit faith from them. It needs realization. The process is very simple, but people are so sinful, it takes time. So people are not able to appreciate the personal form of God. Otherwise, the education is very simple. We are trying to shift from one planet, one city to another city, one planet to another planet. So we should desire to go to a planet which is completely spiritual in nature, where God lives personally. So there is a planet where God is living. That planet, people have eternal life, unlimited non full knowledge, complete knowledge. Complete means as much as we can possess. We cannot possess like Krishna. Krishna is infinite. We are infinitesimal. But as much as we can possess, that much we can have. Complete knowledge and complete bliss. But those people who are not very advanced, it will be difficult for them to appreciate. But this is one verse which anybody can appreciate. And thus Prabhupada, wherever he would go, he would quote the verse or translation of the verse. So anybody, even if a person is hardcore atheist, can appreciate this verse. And thus we can preach very easily to them. So Prahlad Maharaj tells, Yan Mathyanadi Grahamedi Sukhami Tucham. He is feeling compassion for the people who don't have this knowledge, for whom Prahlad Maharaj wants to stay here. And then Prahlad Maharaj, he is stating their condition. What is their situation? Yan Mathyanadi Grahamedi Sukhami Tucham. So Prabhupada translates. Or writes in the purport, materialists think that sexual indulgence is the greatest happiness in this material world. Methun Adi, Adi, everything is, etc. Methun is the greatest pleasure, sexual pleasure. And that is the basis even for married life now. So married life is not supposed to enjoy sex pleasure. People think now that if uh, we can have consensual sex, what is the need of marriage? People think marriage is meant for sex. But actually marriage is not meant for sex. Marriage is meant for controlling sex. If there is no marriage, there will be unlimited sexual pleasure. Then a person will go mad. One will not be able to come to spiritual platform. So in order to come to spiritual platform, one has to make one's sexual indulgence nil, zero. And Prabhupada explains, a brahmachari can do this very, very easily. This is the secret, Prabhupada explains. There is a secret of spiritual life. That for coming to spiritual platform, one has to make one's sex life nil. That is why Prabhupada's Brahmachari has got 75% chances of going back to Godhead. Householders also can go, but the chances are 25%. Why? Because if you are there with the sense object, it is very difficult to make sex life nil. But people were knowing that this is the ultimate objective. So that is why, just like a person who is addicted Drug is given in small doses to make him de-addicted. In a similar fashion, person cannot stop sex life altogether. We have been doing unrestricted sex life in all the species of life. Now in human form of life, regulation is required so that gradually a person can give up. So this regulation first happens in the form of Gurukul, where lot many austerities are taken by the students for the 25 years. And after that, once they have practiced very nicely, those who are very good Brahmanas, very intelligent people will continue. Most of them, they continue. They understand the aim, objective of spiritual life. But those who are not very intelligent, they are able to come back. And they enter into, they enter into household life. But before entering into household life, they have experience of a life without sexual indulgence. How free, how liberating it is. 
because some desire is there for life after life we have been enjoying this sexual pleasure so strong impressions are there in the mind to enjoy strong force is there so if a person is not able to get convinced by hearing then they indulge in sex life and then they see how their life is miserable so it is not that married sexual life will not give us trouble married life will give us trouble any pleasure in this world is coupled by misery that is why krishna tells yehi sansparsha jab hoga dukha yonaya evate fifth chapter verse number 22 any sensual enjoyments in this world of any sense including eyes ears nose tongue and genitals of course dukha yonaya evate it gives rise to misery so any kind of happiness we indulge ourselves in in material world it will lead to misery but if it is in a regulated form person can realize oh this has made me miserable then he can prepare very nicely for vanprastha and eventually sanyas so after brahmachari training whatever little aspiration a person has when he enters into in, into grahastha ashram he faces lot of misery lot of thorns and that helps a person to get detached from the material attachment and then very easily they can go to vanprastha and then sanyas so the purpose of marriage is to regulate restrict our sexual enjoyment only with limited number of partners because earlier people were allowed to marry more than one wife now of course it is not there but only within the marriage and that too only for producing krishna conscious children so one may ask what is the harm if i can enjoy sex life sex life without marriage so that is why it is mentioned here yes you can enjoy the entire western civilization is based on this only to enjoy sexual life but this kind of life prabhupad explains here it is common sense this generally found everywhere and especially found in the western world where there are regular arrangements to satisfy sex life in different ways actually however this has not made anyone happy this also we can see this people have realized in their lives every third person fourth person is having mental disorder this is a common sense phenomena now every person accepts as per who report every eighth person is crazy suffering from mental disorders what to speak of ordinary mental turmoil every third fourth person is depressed he is feeling anxious it has become a common understanding now so people are becoming more and more disturbed by this sort of civilization which is centered around mathunadi sensual enjoyment centered around sex life it has made nobody happy so this nobody can deny atheist also cannot deny that this kind of life which we have made which is centered around enjoyment of the senses has not made anyone happy why it has not made anyone happy prahlad maharaj explains further kandu yane na karyo riva dukh dukham kandu yane na means itching sensation when there is eczema there are itchy sores on the body wet sores they itch like anything and person feels very strong urge to scratch it to rub it and if you scratch it then the itching increases kandu yane na karyor eva dukha dukham and the sore becomes even worse and it gives more pain and blood starts coming out eventually dukha dukham lot of misery and this we can see also every day we are seeing in the news around us there are murders also happening fights are ordinary thing mental disturbance it is ordinary depression is ordinary thing anxiety panic attacks are ordinary things they lead even to murders it is so dangerous for the sex life mother is killing her own son own children just to enjoy with others other partner boyfriend is killing girlfriend girlfriend is killing boyfriend so this is happening why all because of sex life so much anxiety because of sex life so this nobody can deny it leads to misery dukha dukham you have to raise children raising children is great headache that is why people go for abortion abortion pills are one of the most sold pharmaceutical products why because they don't want children are sources of misery trouble they don't want to have children that is why abortion i just want to enjoy sex life 
so either legal sex or illegal sex it is a cause of great misery it leads to misery and okay it leads to misery but meanwhile am i satisfied no neha tripyanti kripana bau dukh ba neha tripyanti there is no satisfaction because it always increases just like the itching propensity always increases the more you rub it so that is the nature of all sensual enjoyment satisfaction of the eyes satisfaction of ear satisfaction of tongue so the whole world is geared up so that i can increase my standard of living standard of living means increased sensual happiness enjoy the senses very very nicely either the five gross senses or the subtle senses people should praise me i should show myself to the world this is also lust expansion of lust seeking name and fame same lust is transformed into this becoming center of attraction this tendency of which is krishna should be center of attraction but i want to do this called lust this expansion of kaam so in this way whether i am seeking name fame praise in the society or i am very much fond of research work that is also lust satisfying my mind i want to figure out this i want to figure out that that is why chaitanya mahaprabhu told and it is one of the quality of the students as mentioned in subhashitani and other sanskrit shlokas one of the quality of student is student must have restricted inquisitiveness yes one should be inquisitive to fulfill the aim of life but if inquisitiveness is not restricted then again one is finished that is what is happening now now we have google entire day person keeps on browsing unlimited inquisitiveness and not able to inquire how to approach and fulfill the aim of life let me see this let me see that let me see what is happening here so inquisitiveness should be very very limited to the instructions of the spiritual master so if a person reads too many books so there was one brahmana when chaitanya mahaprabhu was traveling towards vrindavan he met him and then he told i have read so many books i have confused i have got confused i do not know what is the aim of life and how to achieve it so mahaprabhu told yes this is what happens when a person reads so many books he gets confused what is the aim of life and how to fulfill it he cannot do it so that is why one should find a bona fide spiritual master just like we go to a doctor we keep on consulting 100 doctors nothing will happen one doctor you find very carefully and then surrender completely let him put you into anesthesia and then let him operate you and then you will be cured but if you are not able to surrender to one doctor we approach 1000 doctors nothing is going to happen so find a good doctor find a pure devotee of krishna surrender completely so reading too many books going too many places confuses a person and then thus chaitanya mahaprabhu gave this very important instruction which sanatan goswami has passed on to us one should read limited number of books repeated time that brings self realization not reading many many books so inquisitiveness this is also sensual enjoyment such a life of enjoying the gross or subtle senses never satisfies a person keep on sitting in front of google you will become depressed simply by searching all the knowledge of the world simply you will become depressed keep on researching unlimitedly no nothing is so unless one researches about the absolute truth heart will not be satisfied so that is why this life has not made anyone happy the propensity increases more and then the person loses one's name fame health wealth everything simply to satisfy the senses so that is why we have to realize it is a wrong civilization we have got this training we are passing the same training to our new generation this has to be stopped we have to educate people follow the life of brahmanas in the vedic culture what is life of brahmana brahmana is willing to minimize this sense enjoyment because this is a disease it is addiction every not just drinking smoking is addiction every sense enjoyment is addiction whether we are watching movies watching any video hearing any audio everything is addictive you always want to have more and more and you are never satisfied an addiction always brings misery to our life so that is why brahmanas would stay away from all kinds of sense objects they would stay in a cottage in a jungle in a hermitage and practice austerities austerities means our entire spiritual life advancement depends upon vows and austerities so voluntarily accepting discomfort now i want to increase my comforts of life i am having this car let me have a bigger car than biggest car brahmana what he would do minimize i am having this let me live without this as we see all the people who are doing tapasya 
earlier they would eat regularly then they would eat just milk and fruits then they would just have fruits then they would just have leaves then they would have dry grass then they would just have water then they would leave water also just survive on air in this way tapasya was done necessities of life were minimized so of course our bodies and minds are not so strong we cannot do such austerities but this principle is very important it has to be minimized at least whatever comforts i am having now in life i should make sure in life i should not increase it further i should remain satisfied at that level and gradually minimize it so aim of life is not to maximize but minimize and that is called brahmanical culture and even that is common sense also in the world this minimalistic movement is also getting some foothold because people are realizing this minimalist life is what will why planet is going to get destroyed because of all these industries stephen hawking told we have brought ourselves to the point of no return because of industrialization industries were not there people were surviving for a long time because of these industries now everything is polluted air water fire earth planet is going to be destroyed so thus we should make sure we should be very very careful not to increase our luxuries of life but minimize minimize our living standard and show an example to the world that minimizing the life is what makes a person materially satisfied otherwise it is itching propensity if i enjoy little it increases more especially sexual pleasure raupad writes here even the hippies who have given up all the materialistic comforts of their fathers and grandfathers cannot give up the sensational happiness of sex life so other things we can still give up sex life is very difficult to give up hippies they got disgusted with everything they left the big palaces palatial homes of their fathers grandfathers but they could not give up sensational happiness of sex life sex life is sensational very strong happiness and it is most dangerous also as long as we are not able to make our sex life nil there is no question of advancement in spiritual life and further if somebody tells that krishna has made this happiness no this is not happiness this is illusory happiness kanduti vat manasi jam vishaheta dhiraha it is called manasi jam there is no happiness here yes happiness is there happiness is on spiritual platform on this material platform it is only illusion which krishna has created krishna has not created happiness here but illusion of happiness there is no happiness in this material world at all just like in dream we enjoy eating some nice food stuff there is no food stuff it is illusion i am not eating similarly this happiness which we enjoy it is manasijam what is manasijam prabhupad explains we develop such tendencies in association with the modes of material nature in association with some people i have started thinking that this kind of dress is very nice let me wear this kind of job is very nice let me have it i got associated with a person and then i got carried away started thinking oh, this person is very attractive i will be very happy with this person no simply by association with sense objects we develop desire to enjoy them but this is all mental concoction <coughs> so there is no, no real happiness whatever aspirations of life we have it is because we associated with some people they told if you are rich then you are successful brahmanas will tell if you are rich you are in maya money is maya wealth is maya unless one knows how to use for krishna then it is lakshmi then the same wealth will bring us spiritual advancement so earning wealth is not bad if you can use for krishna then the wealth is lakshmi but if wealth we use for our enjoyment it is maya it is durga that wealth will kill us just like ravana wanted to enjoy sita that became the destruction of ravana cause of destruction so if we hold sita or lakshmi for our enjoyment we will be destroyed hanuman also wanted sita so that sita can be brought back to lord ram so if i want to have wealth for krishna so thus prabhupa told his disciples yes you earn money as much as possible but use for krishna arjun also is called dhananjay dhananjay means winner of wealth he got so much of wealth but for war for performing sacrifice yagya for using in the service of krishna 
So being a very rich man, it's very, very dangerous. If we are not using for Krishna, then it is Maya. It will pierce us very badly, such wealth. But if you use for Krishna, that will bring us spiritual bliss. So same will bring spiritual bliss. If you use for Krishna, it brings material distress. If we store it or enjoy for our happiness. So thus a Brahmana will tell money is Maya. So in association of Brahmanas, one will be afraid of money. And in association of materialists, one will be very jolly seeing money. An ignorant person, he might think, oh, this, just like a child, for him, playing around is very good. Eating mud is very good. He feels happiness. But one who is wise, he will know this is not good. So one should get this wisdom and understand that this material sense enjoyment, especially sex life, is very, very dangerous. One is never satisfied with this. So this any common person can understand that this is illusory happiness. I met with some people and in their association I have learnt getting more marks in school and college, this is good, that will make me happy. So I am working very hard for this end. Getting more money will make me happy, doing sex will make me happy. I have watched some movies, some things and then they tell if you have a life partner with you, some association of boy and girl, you will be very happy. But Bhagavatam tells the reverse. Because we have not had, had this association. So all our aspirations in life simply depend upon association. So there was a devotee child in the movement. So they had some non-devotee friends. So usually when you go to a place where children are there, you try to carry some chocolates, toys for them. So they got some toys, thinking that the boy would be very happy. And when the boy saw this toy car or some other toy, he started screaming, Oh, Maya, Maya, Maya. <laughs> this is Maya. <laughs> so this is the training which devotee children have got. <laughs> Ordinary child would be very glad. Oh, this is nice. But this is called power of association. So this child was trained so nicely. As soon as he saw this toy, he started shouting, Maya, Maya. <laughs> this is Maya. <laughs> so this is called training. So thus Prabhupada tells, now it is very difficult. Uh, the sensual forces are very strong. Association is so bad. But at least we should understand this point. Even though association is bad, I might be having strong drives and urges. I should understand this is not the way civilization should be driven for. Sensual enjoyment is itching propensity. The desire always increase. And neha tripyanti, one is never satisfied. Physical diseases are increasing. Mental diseases are increasing by following this lifestyle. And on the other hand, we have devotees. Now, fortunately, in every country of the world, they follow a reverse lifestyle of satisfying Krishna and they are very happy and satisfied. Mind is satisfied, body is also healthy and satisfied. So thus we can understand it makes sense. Now, how to apply in our life? That is second question. That also Prabhupada explains in the purport. So one is preaching. So this we can preach, anybody will be able to appreciate. That any process which helps you mitigate the desires of the senses will make you happy. So thus follow Krishna consciousness. Any other thing will not be able to help you control the senses. So when I was following some other process of impersonalism, I would meditate and I would enjoy great happiness. Whenever I find time, I would sit, I would meditate. But then I would think that I was convinced I am not the body. But then why do I feel like going to shopping malls and enjoying with friends? Why this tendency of sensual enjoyment is still there? Why I am not able to control it? So even the theoretical knowledge is there, but sensual control is not possible. And then I saw the great Swami, so-called brahmacharis of that organization. <laughs> so what would brahmacharis do? They will have a meditation session, three-day session, and guided meditation, close your eyes, focus on your breath, and breathe in, hold, and breathe out. Focus on the chakra, like this it will go on. <laughs> and then after this meditation, Swamiji would go, because my friend hosted one such Swami in his place. And Swamiji would watch movies entire day on his laptop. <laughs> so he is Swami, he is Brahmachari. So he got little inquisitive because we have basic sense. Some people do not have even that, those who are completely approach some such organizations for sensual enjoyment. But some people are sincere seekers who unfortunately get stuck. So yeah, Swamiji, uh, if I have one small question that, uh, why are we watching movies? Spiritual life means we should control. 
control the senses we should have detachment so it will yes i am practicing detachment i am practicing how not to get attracted by the movie by watching the movie <laughs> So the Swamiji is watching movies the entire day, <laughs> practicing how not to get attracted by it. <laughs> so in this way, uh, and then I could see many more things, all the, I don't wish to discuss what all was happening with all the Swamis. I mean, all who were in touch, some four Swamis were in touch and three I saw in very, very disgraceful situations. Uh, so, yes, we can follow impersonalism, all these other, th other things, but it will not be possible to control the senses. Controlling the senses is possible by Krishna consciousness. So anybody will be able to appreciate this fact, that this tendency which we have got, it is creating more misery in our life. We see in the statistics, we see in our own life, propensity increases. So somehow we should try to curb this tendency, these strong urges. So how to do it, Prabhupada explains. This human form of life, such persons are described here as Kripanas, misers. Those who cannot give up the sensual enjoyment, they are called Kripana, miser. Kripana means Panjus, who does not know how to use the asset of his life. He'll have a lot of money but lead a wretched life. So this human body is meant to attain the goal of life by which we can have life free of death, disease, old age and of unlimited happiness. But one does not know how to utilize this human asset. He's called Kripana, miser. One who knows how to use that is called Brahmana. Described here as Kripana's misers, the human form of life is great asset, for in this life one can fulfill the goal of existence. Unfortunately, however, because there is a lack of education and culture, people are victimized by the false happiness of sex life. So Prabhupada writes two things, why people are falling for this, they are becoming victims of the sex life because of lack of education and culture. So every word Prabhupada has put very carefully. We should read very carefully. So two things are, first of all, education. People are not educated. Their eyes are not open. They see how it is creating trouble in life. So first of all, education is required. But unless there is culture, education will be of no use. So thus Prabhupada says, you are reading the philosophy very nicely. But unless you apply the philosophy, you will not get the result. So one should practically apply the philosophy in life by getting up early in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, Brahmurta, do Manglarti, participate in all the temple activities. So apply the philosophy in your life, then it will be fruitful. So this is called culture. So as many devotees ask, that Prabhu, I understand this knowledge, but what to do? Culture is so bad. I know I have to sleep early. But my wingmates are not sleeping on time. What do I do? They are playing loud music. My roommate is watching pornography. How do I stop? I also get attracted. And people are indulging in so many different kinds of things. So That's called culture. I want to do Manglarti, but where is opportunity? I want to have only Prasadam, but where is opportunity? I want to read Bhagavad Gita every day. Where is opportunity? So that is why culture. This is called Vedic culture. Everyone would get up early in the morning start their day chanting and hearing the names of Krishna and finish their nights again by some kirtan, reading about Krishna. In this way, they would go to sleep, Prabhupada tells. They would sleep meditating on the pastimes of Krishna. They would dream of Krishna. This is called Vedic culture. Thus people, all the festivals were around this. You have uh, Ram Nami, you have Dashara, you watch Ram Leela, you have dances, Bharat Natyam, everything. All the, whatever pleasures we have, all pleasures were focused around Krishna consciousness. So this is called culture. The culture is making you Krishna conscious. So that is why we should take advantage of such a culture. That culture is only possible in devotee association. So education, culture, we should read and contemplate on the subject matter. Hear this subject matter, Bhagavatam very nicely. But then we have to have a culture also. So this we neglect. This we should not neglect. Prabhupada is writing. Because of lack of education and culture, people are victimized by false happiness of sex life. So in our colony, there was, there were many, many thefts happening. Then they started a culture that men in turns, they would go on a patrol in the society and guard the society. 
I mean, this apartment life is only in here in Mumbai and some other cities. Now it is coming up earlier. Independent houses were there. It was close to a small mountain range. So thieves would run away in the mountain and they would come down. It was very close to the, those hills. So many thefts were happening. So then they started patrolling in the night and then there were no thefts. This is the culture. So similarly, if we are on guard, if we have this culture from the forces of Maya, then we will not be victimized. So thus it is very important that we take advantage of this culture. So all the youngsters who are there, who are listening, so we request, please take advantage of such culture. Live in the association of devotees. So you can create devotees by discussing, inviting the friends every morning and evening, discuss this wonderful knowledge with them. Then you can have devotees around you and in their association practice this. Developing culture is very important. And if you are fortunate, you are living around a place where you have folk residency, then please live in folk residency. This is very, very important. We have to have this culture. That is why Prabhupada tells, in India, even though knowledge is missing now, but culture makes a person 50% qualified automatically. This is the power of culture, Prabhupada tells. So that is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, Bharat Bhumile Manushya Janma Hila Yar, Janma Sartha Kari Karparu. Here culture is still there, strong. People go to temples, people go to Dham, people go to Kumbh, people go to other places. So this culture is good, it is still very strong. So thus Prabhupada says, anybody who takes birth in India, 50% is life is automatically successful. Just 50% he has to be pushed. Unfortunately, that culture is going away now. Otherwise, 50% culture takes care. And then you educate him further. You train him further. But in West, there is no education, there is no culture. So this culture is so important. 50% is taken care of automatically. So thus I request, please take advantage of this culture. Live in the folk residency or if you are away, you try to create an ambience of devotees around you. Creating this associate, living in association of devotees is important. Those who are grastas, they can try to live around temple, attend all the morning program with the devotees of the temple. Or if you are away from temple, try to create such association. But attending morning, evening program in association of devotees, having this culture in life is very important. A culture where we do morning and evening, Sankirtana, we read, we hear Bhagavatam, we take only Krishna Prasadam, we go for regular pilgrimages. So this culture is very, very important. Next, Prabhupada explains. So, Prahlad Maharaj therefore advises one not to be misled by this realization of sense gratification, especially not by sex life. Rather, one should be sober, avoid sense gratification and be Krishna conscious. So, Prabhupada is giving the solution. Yamuna Chaye, who had lot of sexual indulgence. He was a king. So, it is very difficult. You have many, many partners. You can enjoy with the queens. You can enjoy with the servants. That is the life of a king. But such a person also was able to relish spiritual life. Completely control sex life. And then the evidence is given here. Ever since I am enjoying meditation on the lotus feet of Krishna, when the thoughts of past sinful activities they come in my mind, I spit at that thought. So Krishna consciousness is such an elevated consciousness, one spits at the thought. Just like now our consciousness is advanced. If somebody tells us you eat mud, we will spit at the thought. I don't want to eat mud, but a child is very fond of mud. So when we are able to elevate our consciousness to Krishna consciousness, then it is possible. So this is the solution. We have to elevate ourselves to platform of Krishna consciousness. And then it will be possible. We will be able to apply in our life. But this is important, Prabhupada explains. Going back to God, it is not difficult. But this determination is very difficult. And one cannot be determined unless one has completely controlled one's sex life. This is a secret Prabhupada tells. One cannot be determined in anything unless one completely controls sex life. So this determination will come when we are following this Brahmacharya very, very nicely. So Prabhupada writes here. And one more very important thing which Prahlad Maharaj is repeatedly stressing here, which Prabhupada is also explaining in the purport. This is also very important. Yes, Prabhu, I am regularly chanting 16 rounds for a long time. Devotees tell, but still these urges are so strong. Why? Because we don't understand the complete instruction. So Prabhupada is writing here. 
So you are the president there at the Schloss Rettershof. It is your duty to see that the standards of Krishna consciousness are always maintained, especially chanting 16 rounds daily, observing the four regulative principles, no meat, fish, eggs, no intoxication, no gambling and no illicit sex. The students must all attend morning and evening arti and classes. So, four regulative principles, chanting of 16 rounds and and yes, the students must all attend morning and evening arti and classes. So, both things should happen twice in the life of a devotee, of everyone. That is why you read Bhagavatam, you read anything, there are various pastimes it is told. Those who read this pastime every morning and evening, Prata Sayaha. So morning and evening, it is very important. Morning and evening, there should be Kirtan and classes, both. And daytime, you do your job, your education, whatever you wish to do for Krishna. The students must all attend morning and evening Aarti and classes. If we follow the simple program with, now this is also important. This simple program is there which anybody can do, but this is not sufficient. What needs to be added? Yeah, this has to be done in devotee association only. Otherwise, one who is doing this program without devotee association, his spiritual life will not mature. Prabhupada is telling any person who is trying to be Krishna conscious away from the association of devotees, he is living in great hallucination for that is not possible. Spiritual life does not become mature. One does not get taste in spiritual life. Guma lenge mala, Hare Krishna kar lenge, taste nahi aayega without devotee association. So this is understood that it has to be done. That is why Sankirtanam it is told. Sankirtan means Bahu bhir militwa gayati iti Sankirtanam. Many people they come together to chant and hear. So Sankirtan is the process for Kali Yoga. So one should live in association of devotees. So in association, one should do this, but one thing is missing. What is that? Yeah, that is also under with attention only one should do. In association of devotees, with attention one should do these practices. But unless one does this, he will not. So see, generally we don't realize. This is very important. Without this, it will not work. It is just one wheel of our cart. Prabhupada explains. What Pilad Maharaj explained in previous verse? Purpose of Hare Krishna movement is to do Mangla Arati morning and evening. No. All this, yes. Bhakti Siddhant Maharaj also, he chanted 24 hours for 9 years. 3 lakhs of Hare Krishna holy names he would chant every day. He led a life like Rupa Goswami, Sanatana, Raghunath Das Goswami, all the six Goswamis for nine years. But the purpose was to start the movement, to start this preaching movement, this mission. So all the sadhana which we are doing, Janma Sarta Kari, that is for Parokkar, spreading Das Prabhupada writes here. The students must all attend morning and evening Aarti and classes if you follow the simple program along with regular Sankirtan. What is Sankirtan? Distributing the books and preaching, then there will be no fall down. So if you follow the simple program along with regular Sankirtan. So Prabhupada is using the word regular, not sometimes. We do Sankirtan only in book marathon. <laughs> because we get prizes. <laughs> no, Sankirtan, regular Sankirtan. The students, so with regular Sankirtan, distributing the books and preaching, then there will be no fall down. Prabhupada pure devotee is guaranteed. Then there will be no fall down. Just like, Prabhupada gives example, just like if one keeps himself clean and properly nourished by eating regularly, he will not infect diseases. One has to take bath regularly. Then one will be freed from diseases. So every day when a person takes bath minimum two times, he'll be very fit and takes care of diet also properly. This is very important. So Sanatan Goswami is told when he was traveling towards Jagannath Puri, he took a path from the jungle. So there was no proper diet. 
so uh, because of this he developed itching sores on his body wet sores again yeah. so proper diet is important and taking bath regularly is important so just like even keeps himself clean and properly nourished by eating regularly he will not infect disease but if there is neglect then there is room for infection he becomes weak and fall prey to disease so krishna consciousness is the medicine for the material disease so krishna consciousness is medicine so in medicine there are many many ingredients you see the what is that called composition on the other side so many chemicals will be there but there is something which is called prabhupad writes so krishna consciousness is the medicine for the material disease and chanting hari krishna mantra sincerely is the basic ingredient of the medicine so there is something which is called basic ingredient of the medicine so that krishna consciousness whatever we are doing we are uh unlimited activities are there what we do in in our life but prabhupad is writing chanting hari krishna mantra sincerely what we do the 16 rounds chanting thing sincerely is the basic ingredient there is the principal thing which gives potency to the medicine and how chanting hari krishna sincerely if we are not sincere then we may try various things we may watch 100 videos how to control the urges how to do x y z but we should have faith prabhupada has not stated anywhere anything else any other process to control mind and sexual urges prabhupada has simply always spoken just these basic things everywhere just these basic things so with faith but these have to be done sincerely chanting hari krishna with great each and every and it is very simple an illiterate person also can do just here nothing else we have to do just try to hear each and every word very attentively so chanting hari krishna mantra sincerely is the basic ingredient of the medicine so thus prabhupada tells if we follow the simple program then there is no fall down <laughs> then prabhupada quotes further there are many who like to chant the hari krishna mantra in a silent solitary place but if one is not interested in preaching talking constantly to non devotees the influence of the modes of nature is very difficult to surpass this prabhupad writes in the purport of next verse which we'll see next sunday so if one is not interested in preaching just sitting simply sitting and chanting yes hari krishna mantra is basic ingredient of medicine but these other portions especially preaching is very important so we should chant sincerely and then we should regularly preach also if you are not just interested in sitting in a solitary place and chant very nicely i am advanced devotee i chant 64 rounds on ekadashi or 100 rounds or do this thing we will not have realization even mo- modes of nature it will be very difficult to surpass prabhupada is telling the influence of modes of nature is very difficult to surpass then prabhupada writes one who is interested in his own salvation is not as advanced whose phone it is so please do not keep there if you are keeping there make it silent the one who is interested in his own salvation is not as advanced in krishna consciousness as one who feels compassion for others and who therefore propagates the krishna consciousness movement such an advanced devotee will never fall down for krishna will give him special protection this is the sum and substance of the krishna consciousness movement sum and substance prabhupad has told what is sum and substance that if you preach you will not fall down the only difficulty is spiritual life is very 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 dynamic any time fall down can happen very precarious shurasya dharya it is like razor's edge little inattention there is blood so any time fall down can happen bharat maharaj was advancing very nicely but he fell down and then two lives he had to wait others might have to wait for many many lives those who are not so advanced but prabhupad writes here such an advanced devotee will never fall down who who propagates this who preaches to others krishna gives him special protection this is the sum and substance of krishna consciousness movement so thus if we simply follow this process morning and evening in the association of devotees we sincerely chant and hear hari krishna mantra chant and hear shrimad bhagavatam and then preach this message very nicely so i request please try to work very very hard for krishna 
on weekdays you have your regular engagement at least on weekends two days log in at the same time log out at the same time as the office hours but do it for krishna there is no vacation for a devotee so at least two days we are on leave so two day work very nicely for krishna yes we uh, try to achieve in your office in your education the best results for the service of krishna but don't get disturbed if you don't get the results we cannot compete with the materialists and if you follow this process material life also will come in place automatically those who are preachers they are automatically successful you will notice as soon as you start preaching very sincerely as much sincere as we are for our regular education and jobs you will see material life is automatically taken care if you only take care of material life neither material life brings satisfaction nor there is no spiritual advancement whatever so please try to work very hard very very sincerely at least whatever leaves we have try to use best for spreading this message of krishna consciousness then krishna is in control we will be able to not just preach this verse but apply in our life also with this we'll finish any questions Loudly. It is so detrimental. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the question is: This sexual indulgence is so dangerous that it makes a person killer also. killer of child in the womb by abortion but in some cases if a woman is raped by somebody then what should happen is it allowed to abort so what is rape means accidental birth of a child anyway the child has come through the semen of the father so if the living entity has come to this place so it is just like asking somebody has come to meet me with planning an appointment if somebody comes without appointment can i kill him <laughs> can i kill the guest who has come without appointment <laughs> so how we can kill the child so society why society will think bad woman was not willing to do that it was forced upon her right so what is a ha huh? one should raise the child then she'll be badly punished mother is killing the child what can be worse than that so by any means if the child is there she's i mean mother now how mother can kill child that is no so thus uh, it is very big sin killing the child in the womb killing itself is a sin killing child in the womb especially when mother kills no sin like this so i should raise the child mother for social prestige is killing the child so she is a demoness unfortunately that is the situation in society any other question yes yeah yes yeah when we go to preach should we also chant for 9 years <laughs> yes yes why not yes so the question is as bhaktis nan maharaj prepared himself very nicely for 9 years before starting this movement so should we also do this thing and prepare ourselves yes we must that is why it is told janma sartha kari kar parupkar we should chant hari krishna follow this that is why prabhupada has told follow the simple process and regularly do sankirtan sankirtan means distributing books and preaching so unless we are doing this morning and evening program nicely what we will be able to preach so it is very important to prepare ourselves of course we cannot prepare ourselves like bhakti sanan maharaj so uh, we are not recommended to do that but our regular sadhana we must do very nicely that is preparation Yes. 
Some companies are there to extract the cost studies. So, are the companies much of the people they are making in this person or that person who should do that for cost studies like that? So the question is, as we discussed, our spiritual advancement depends upon vows and austerities. So some communities, they engage in rigorous austerities. Those are very few, but yes, some of them are there. They undertake rigorous austerity. So should we follow them? So the understanding is anything, austerity, especially in regard to austerity, it is mentioned, it should be taken under the guidance of spiritual master. Anybody who is doing austerity, they will tell us. Otherwise, it is giving pain to super soul. Just like if the child is working very hard, under the guidance of teachers, that austerity will lead him to good future. But unnecessarily one is working hard, that is pain. So parents will be in distress, teacher will come in distress. So God becomes distressed seeing unnecessary austerities. So unnecessary austerity means under guidance of spiritual master. So that is why whatever austerities we have to do, so Prabhupada tells these basic austerities. Get up early in the morning, Brahmurta. Don't sleep beyond 4 o'clock. Take cold water bath, minimum twice in a day. Follow four regulative principles very, very strictly. Do the sadhana morning and evening. Four regulative principles. This basic sadhana, basic tapasya, fasting on ekadashi and other appearance, disappearance days. This tapasya Prabhupada tells is sufficient. And our, we should do positive tapasya. What is that? Going and facing the opposing elements in preaching. When you go outside, there would be embarrassment. People may not listen. People may reject. This is also Tapasya Prabhupada. Living in association of devotees. Devotees might tell something. I, I might be uncomfortable. That is also Tapasya. So cooperating with each other. I don't agree with this person. I will live separately. No, never living away from devotees. Cooperating despite all the differences. That is called Tapasya. So this Tapasya we are supposed to live. Live, follow the orders. Mind does not... Follow the orders of anyone very easily. So always following the orders of devotees, living in the association of devotees, this is tapasya. Preaching Krishna consciousness, this is tapasya, this positive tapasya. Then this way, under guidance of spiritual master, we do tapasya. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the question is that students, uh, as we discuss, one of the qualifications, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also is telling that our inquisitiveness should be limited. One should not read too many books. But in Nectar of Instruction, it is told that this Jigyasa is very good. Hmm? So in Nectar of Instruction, again it is written, Atyahara Prayashascha Prajalpo Niyamagra. There are six things which destroy Bhakti. One of them is Prayas. Prayas means... Over endeavor. So, over endeavor for anything which is very difficult to attain, that spoils spiritual life. That could be material assets, that could be knowledge also. So, I want to, I am so impatient, I don't wish to stick to the process of my spiritual master, to the books of my spiritual master, want to go here and there and immediately want to understand Krishna consciousness. This is also called prayas. Mental speculation. Doing too much of mental speculation to understand immediately Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada explains, this mental speculation is also prayas. So one should not in this way avoid too much of spiritual books reading also. So thus Jigyasa means, Jigyasa also should be guided by, when you have Jigyasa, what Krishna is telling? Tad vidhi pranipatein pari prashnena sevaya ubdhyekshyanti te jnanam jnanina sattva darshina approach atatpa jnani and ask questions from him. He will give you answers. So jigyasa should be restricted to spiritual master. So our spirit, just like our spiritual master has not told about the intimate pastimes of, many many intimate pastimes of Krishna, but we are not supposed to read that. Prabhupada did not even explain pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And some devotees were reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is bona fide Gaudi Vaishnav literature. And Prabhupada told, one disciple complained, Prabhupada, these are disciples are reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, translated by someone else. So Prabhupada told, you are very right in understanding that one should be faithful, one should stick to the books of spiritual master. So, thus this chastity should be there. I am not interested in any pastimes of even Lord Chaitanya, which are not given to me by spiritual master. 
not interested in past times of Krishna, which are not given to me by my spiritual master. In this way, our inquisitiveness should be restricted to spiritual master. Even previous acharyas, their instruction should also be understood through our spiritual master. In previous session, we were told that uh, the same thing you told that she's spiritual master. Yes. Uh, also told that the spiritual master is the master. Yes. Uh, Other spiritual master, yes. So, actually, Prabhupada also wants. Can we? Can we read yes, books? yes. So, Prabhupada told that delete the books, this were printed to that. Yes. Yes. They were not wrong. Yes, yes. Can we also So, the further question is one disciple asked Prabhupada that uh, can we read books of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj? So I don't know if I have this conversation. I will share. Uh, so first of all, Prabhupada told, read the books which are published before this year. Why? Huh? 1932, yeah, Prabhu remembers. 1932, before, because after that, books got changed. So if books are getting changed, then it loses spiritual power. So he told, read books before that of 1932, first of all. And second thing was? Yes. Yes. So why I want to go to books of Bhaktisdan Saraswati Maharaj? Have I finished all Prabhupada books? Prabhupada himself has given unlimited books. So not just books. First of all, there are books. After Bhagavad Gita, there is Srimad Bhagavatam, which if we read for one hour every day, it will take us four years or five years to finish. If we read scrutinizingly carefully, it will take easily four years. Or if you are very intelligent, quick realizations are happening three years. <laughs> More than one hour, normal people cannot take out time to read. So one or two hours, if you read, uh, your four years are booked on an average. One reading. And then after that, if you start reading, you'll realize this is also <laughs> there in Bhagavatam. <laughs> and then there is Chaitanya Chaitamrita. And so many other books, of course, are there. And then Prabhupada's articles are there in Back to Godhead magazine. And then Prabhupada's conver letters are there. And Prabhupada's conversations are there. Huh? Yes, all the conversation, morning walk, room conversation. So unlimited letters, conversations, Back to Godhead articles. Other small books are there, Nectar of Devotion, Nectar of Instruction. So Krishna book, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charita Amrita. So if you want to understand Krishna consciousness from these books, I don't know where is scope of going outside. But uh, there is no restriction, but a uh, disciple should have faith. And Prabhupada just told, these books, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Nectar of Devotion, Chaitanya Charita Amrita, they are sufficient for development of one spiritual life and for propagating Krishna consciousness movement across the world. When disciples were having such advanced realization, they were not having anything but first few cantos of Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita with them, that's it. And they are spreading, not just advancing so wonderfully, but they are spreading Krishna consciousness movement across the world, across the continents, reading the same books and literatures which were available. So what is required is complete faith that this is sufficient. So Prabhupada did not want to discourage because in principle it is possible, but in practical life, uh, we are so fallen, we cannot do it. People who are having very long life, advanced life, they could do that, they would do that. But ordinary people, it is not possible. So thus Prabhupada finally concluded that actually one should be satisfied by reading the books of one spiritual master. So first Prabhupada told, before 1932 you can read, there is no harm. And after that also, his philosophy is very high, you read Brahma Samhita only. <laughs> and after that, Prabhupada told, actually one should be satisfied in reading the books of a spiritual master. So Prabhupada has given us so much, so there is hardly any scope. Yeah, that Prabhupada told, because it is very special book, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu retrieved it. So that Prabhupada told, that you read, that book of my spiritual master you should read.
says in principle there is no bar one can read Prabhupada has told read the books of previous acharyas but then there are two limitations which are two limitations one can read there is no harm at all one should chant 24 hours Hare Krishna mantra Tatatam Kirtayantumam but can we do it no so one should read, should read books of previous acharyas Prabhupada has told but first is greatest barrier is even if we are able to completely realize finish Prabhupada books, the barrier is that of language. Apart from Bhakti Zdan Maharaj and few books of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, everything is in Sanskrit or Bengali. So very difficult. We do not know Sanskrit. Just to become expert in grammar, we need to have 12 years of dedicated education. So who can dedicate 12 years for studying grammar? And then one will be able to understand those books. So first of all, we do not know the language. And even to understand them, we have to understand in parampara. Somebody has explained them very nicely. So now the books which are translated in English language, those translations are done by devotees who may or may not be pure devotees. So Prabhupada tells what to speak of giving purports. Even for translating these literatures, one has to be on liberated platform. So Prabhupada has encouraged, my disciples should also write books because previous acharyas have written. But before translating such literatures, one should be on transcendental platform. So thus, even though we have English translations, but they may not be or may or may not be on transcendental platform, those who have written those literatures. So these are two limitations. We don't know Sanskrit and we do not know the people who have translated are liberated or not. So thus, this is, so thus everyone is encouraged to chant Hare Krishna Mantra 24 hours, Prabhupada tells. Prabhupada tells, one should made, eating, waiting, sleeping, depending, zero, that is the aim of life, but can we do it? So in a similar fashion, one should read books of previous acharyas, but can we do it? So if we can do it, we should do. Yeah. Yes. No, so it has been wrongly understood. So the question is, the disciples are asking Prabhupada that why you are leaving early and Bhagavatam is not there. So Prabhupada told, I will translate means before disappearing from this planet, I will give you Bhagavatam. And another thing is, yes, Prabhupada told the disciples to finish. But which disciple? That disciple is unfortunately, he could not continue in the movement. One disciple was allowed to finish uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, but that disciple was not able to continue in the movement. So thus the way Bhagavatam was supposed to be finished, it was not finished in that manner. So thus whatever Prabhupada has given, that is sufficient for us. Any online questions? What is better to? Okay. So Nirja Lekadashi, some people they fast from water also. And then chanting also becomes difficult. So, or we can drink water and chant nicely. So chanting nicely is recommended. And what to speak of that? I will eat just. So these principles are important to be understood. What is Prabhupada's intention? So Prabhupada is writing. In a talk with Srila Prabhupada in Chicago on July 5th, 1975, Tamal Krishna Goswami asked Srila Prabhupada about Ekadashi because Prabhupada is writing a letter also on Ekadashi. There should be no other business, chanting and hearing. Sometimes we have heard that Ekadashi is an auspicious 
is an inauspicious alignment of planets. And therefore, one has to counteract this inauspiciousness by chanting more. Prabhupada told, no, no, it is most auspicious and chanting is more effective. <laughs> I remember you were instructing once that all of your initiate disciples should chant 25 rounds. So Prabhupada's one letter is also there when Prabhupada is appreciating that somebody is chanting 25 rounds. Prabhupada told it is good, it is nice. Minimum, Prabhupada affirms, yes, this is fact. On Ekadashi, one should chant minimum 25 rounds, Prabhupada is telling. Minimum on this day, is that a rule that we should follow in our temple? Prabhupada told, we are 16 rounds. It's not a rule. We are 16 rounds. No, I mean on Ekadashi, Prabhupada tells, oh yes, Ekadashi, simply you should chant, no other business. So Prabhupada has told this. On Ekadashi, simply chant, no other business. Minimum should be 25 rounds. Later in Mayapur, next year, Feb 11, 1976, same devotee, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, asked for further clarification. We should always chant 25 rounds on Ekadashi if initiated. Initiated, everyone. Why initiated, Prabhupada? Not just initiated, everyone should chant 25 rounds. So Prabhupada was very clear that we should chant minimum 25 rounds or as much as possible. Ekadashi is just meant for, and Prabhupada writes, all other business should be suspended if it is not urgent. Yes, there is urgent seva. Pujari bolega, I will chanting chanting. So urgent seva must be attended, but if something is not urgent, then one should chant entire day. All other activities which are not urgent should be suspended. Initiated everyone, why initiate? So that should be standard for our movement on Ekadashi day. Standard is 16, but if one can chant more, then he is welcome. It is not mandatory for Ekadashi? No, Ekadashi means that fasting and chanting. Sometimes I am wondering, because our men have to go out on book distribution. So then he asked this challenge. If they go out on book distribution, they will be hampered day. Prabhupada tells, no, no. That is also preaching work. For that purpose, you can stop this. So Prabhupada is giving so much stress that all other activities should be suspended. There should be no other business. One should chant 25 rounds minimum entire day. But then Prabhupada is telling, for this activity, you can stop. And what is that? Book distribution, preaching. So Prabhupada told, no, book distribution when it was asked, no, no, that is also preaching work. For that purpose, you can stop this. But generally, one who has no preaching work, he can chant. Extra? Yes, extra. I see. Hare Krishna. So one who has got no preaching work, khali bait hai. Ya, kuch aur seva kar rai bhagwan ki. Baki sari seva, agar urgent nahi hai, hum usko postpone kar sakte hai. But jo preaching kar rai hai, usko ye nahi karna hai. No, no, that is also preaching. For that purpose, you can stop this. But generally, one who has no preaching work, he can chant. So, preaching is so very much important. So, thus, uh, we have to understand that our seva is very important. So, first of all, if you are having no time for preaching, you are having Ekadashi only when you are able to take out time. Leave your rounds, please go out for preaching. So simply by chanting 16 rounds and working very hard for preaching will bring us spiritual pleasure and realization. Not by being selfish that I can just sit and do this thing. Of course, if the mind is disturbed and my I don't have enough enthusiasm, then Prabhupada has told, find a suitable temple and chant Hare Krishna nicely. But otherwise, in normal circumstances, if time is limited, one should go out and preach. Of course, we in our temple, we also chant on Ekadashi, but we, because we have got so much of time and we spend all the time in preaching. But otherwise, if you are having limited time, I see some devotees, they are taking out time just for Ekadashi, for chanting nicely and there is no preaching work at all. So then this is not very right. So thus I request, uh, that is why Prabhupada quoted his spiritual master, Bhakti Dan Maharaj. On Ekadashi, disciple told, I am feeling very weak because they would fast very strongly. So Bhakti Siddhan Maharaj told, you eat khichdi and go out for preaching. So if one eats grains on Ekadashi, one gets the sin of killing one's mother, father, spiritual master, everyone. It is so dangerous eating grains on Ekadashi. But preaching is so important, Bhakti Siddhan Maharaj told, eat khichdi and go out for preaching. So we can understand how important is the preaching work. 
So that is why Krishna tells, nobody is dear to me than the preacher. And one place Prabhupada devotees were experiencing difficulty and others were complaining, these people, they eat whatever they get on the way. So he told, not whatever Prabhupada, we offer some nuts and this thing, we offer whatever is possible. So then Prabhupada actually told, yes, eat whatever but preach. <laughs> <laughs> Preacher, no rules and regulations. Preaching is so exalted. Prabhupada told this. One place Prabhupada told, eat meat and preach. <laughs> when one devotee repeatedly told, Prabhupada, there is no vegetarian food available. Prabhupada told, damn your consciousness. He told Prabhupada, what about my consciousness? Prabhupada told, damn your consciousness. These are exact words. So because I also was having difficulty in preaching when I went. So unfortunately, I could not uh, get another devotee with me. I was alone. Now alone, I have to manage everything. <laughs> Now, where is time for preaching? So, I would, uh, I taught one vegetarian restaurant person. I gave him Krishna book. I taught him chant Hare Krishna nicely. <laughs> and then I told you cook now <laughs> for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I was thinking whether this is nice or not. And I had to continue this for many months, couple of months before we were able to make cooking arrangement. So then I was discussing with another devotee. I came back to it. Prabhu, I am wondering what I should do. I should spend so much time there or not because I am not having anything. There is no time for arranging this thing. I am living in a room only. So then Prabhu told, Prabhu, I have found this wonderful quote <laughs> about preaching. And I also never discovered this before. And then Prabhu shared this with me. See this. So devotee is telling Prabhupada, there is, uh, we have to eat. Prabhupada is telling, eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada, what about my consciousness? Prabhupada, just damn your consciousness. <laughs> you eat meat and preach. <laughs> so then I got assured that it is authorized. That is all right. Of course, one should not continue always like this. Try to arrange. <laughs> yes, very nice. <laughs> then we got quotes. Prabhupada is telling us like we are traveling. So we will not starve. We have to eat in a restaurant also. Eating in a restaurant is very sinful otherwise. But Prabhupada told we are traveling. We are traveling to different... So we have to eat in a restaurant. We will not starve. But then for preaching, if you pay for it, there are mulena shuddhyati, that food becomes purified. So then you pray to Krishna, if I can kindly get prasadam very soon. So thus preaching is so, just understand how important is preaching. So if limited time we are having, please go out and preach. If you are having time for preaching and chanting also, yes, some days you can take out for preaching. Prabhupada allowed. On Sunday you do kirtan entire day. On Ekadashi you chant also, but not at the cost of preaching. Especially it is very, very important. Hmm? So thus, please uh, uh, preach nicely and take whatever minimum non drain prasadam is required to get strength. Not that we are weak, that we are not able to preach outside and not able to chant. So preaching outside, chanting is our principle and fasting should be done keeping, in, keeping this principle in mind. Any other question? Yeah. Nobody will accept. Okay, the question is, if a woman, woman is raped, she might not be accepted by anyone else in the society. And uh, if she aborts, then she might be able to marry and get accepted. So I think this was, and it was true in previous ages. When Krishna was there, women were kidnapped and then they told nobody will marry us. Nowadays, almost every other woman is having premarital sex before marriage. So people are accepting this thing. And uh, so nowadays society is different. Even after rape, there might be some difficulty, but it is not very difficult. Still one will be accepted. But still whatever it is, accepted or no accepted, how one can kill child? Mother is telling, uh, child, let me kill you because I want to remarry. This is very bad. So this does not make sense. And actually what is the purpose of marriage? The purpose of marriage is not sex enjoyment. The purpose of marriage is to get a child. Putrayate kriyate bharya putr pindu prayojanam. So the purpose of marriage is child. So already if child is there, what is the need of marriage? So thus abortion is out of question. If destiny is like that, one should try to manage. And it is not that. People will accept. First of all, the society is open-minded now. 
and having premarital sex is society is so degraded now they don't consider it a sin that till after marriage you try to be chaste and honest so people will accept even if nobody accepts for argument say where is the question of abortion it is just like mother telling to child let me kill you because i want to marry another man this is not good so that is why protection is required because unless that is why staying at home is required so staying at home uh, why there should be objection staying at home is luxury so i was hearing one person who is uh, guiding the devotees in making some courses so he is telling people travel so much in cities like mumbai 2 3 hours they spend every day if you work from your home that much time you can use for your preaching work so it is so nice you stay at home stay with children teach children who doesn't like spending time with children so it's not a limitation but a luxury meta is telling we will remove you unless you come back to office by september <laughs> so people don't want to leave their homes so living living in home is such a wonderful thing artificially out of this competition and actually to enjoy illicit sex women are competing with men i also want to go to office otherwise nobody is willing to go to office even in big companies who have wonderful offices like facebook and other companies apple they want to stay at home so if system is so nice that you are allowed to stay at home why we need to bother stay at home stay with your nice children educate them play with them we are having responsibility so that is why this culture we have to bring back protection is required if you go outside there is all the danger of molestation and abuse and other things so but still whatever it is there is no question of abortion it is killing Krishna has many wives. Krishna has not told not to marry. Why do we need to sacrifice? What do we get? Krishna had many wives. And? Read, read, read. Not to get married. No, this is wrong. Uh, Krishna had many wives, but he tells us not to have wife. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna has told throughout Bhagavad Gita that is the purpose of the entire Bhagavad Gita as uh, we have understood here complete renunciation from the objects of sense gratification Brahmacharya is the first principle that is what Krishna told to Arjuna if you want to make your life perfect attain the stage of Samadhi so Krishna told Arjuna what is the process Shuchav Deshe Prathishthapya Sthiram Asana Matmana first of all leave your house follow brahmacharya and go to a secluded place and then you do all these tapasyas throughout bhagavad gita krishna is telling this this is the purpose of making sex life nil in all the vedic literatures so krishna recommends us so why he recommends us because this is illusory platform we have got our eternal family in the spiritual world but we have forgotten that just like if we forget our real family members in dream i am enjoying or in virtual life <laughs> So it is not recommended if you are just like one husband and wife. They came in touch with each other through virtual gaming. So in virtual life they got married. And then in real life also they got married. And then in real life they had a baby. In virtual life also they had a baby. But they got so much engrossed in taking care of their virtual baby. Real baby died out of starvation. <laughs> it actually happened. <laughs> So they were taking care of their virtual avatar so nicely. They are feeding the virtual baby so much. Real baby starved. Real baby died. They did not realize. Then doctors figured out that starvation se mar gaya bechara. So <laughs> real baby ko khana hi nahi kilaya. <laughs> so we have our real life. Our real life is with God. We have our real family members, but we have forgotten them. And in this life here, we are stuck in temporary relationships, temporary sense enjoyment, which gives pain. So thus Krishna tells, don't get attached here. Don't get entangled here. and uh, get awakened to your real platform real family so with this we will end i think because granth rashi mad bhagavatam ki jay jagat guru shila prabhupad ki